Hello, my name is Paul Levette and I'm one of the reference librarians at Helmut Farb Library. This presentation will discuss how you can establish the relevance of the citations that you retrieve when you search our library databases. When you're critiquing a journal article, there are a number of factors to bear in mind. First will be the currency, how recently it was published. This changes depending on what you're trying to research. So articles that are about drugs and how they're used, you're probably going to want to look at articles that are no more than five to 10 years old because that information changes uh, quite quickly. Um, looking at the current COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, any articles about the pandemic itself and uh, the uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus are going to be no more than 18 months to two years old. But if you're interested in researching coronaviruses in general, you might be going back further, for example, to the, um, the SARS virus from 2003. So again, it just depends on your subject. In terms of the relevance of the question, you want to um, read the article with an eye to asking whether the data that's being presented answers the, uh, the question, the hypothesis that was originally um, asked by the authors, and whether or not it is based on observable facts or whether it represents just the opinion of the writer. You want to consider the authority of the writer, whether or not they are an authority to write about the resource. And so um, a good thing to do is to have a look at the uh, the other articles that the author has written. So um, you can just look them up by doing an author search in PubMed and see are they indeed qualified to write about this topic. Um, also um, have a look at any funding sources that are reported in an article. It's uh, important to know if somebody is f who they're funded by because that can help you to establish whether or not they might be writing with a particular slant or bias. Uh, towards reporting or emphasizing certain facts over others. Uh, in terms of the accuracy, uh, there are a lot of checklists out there. Uh, for example, the ones that are produced by the Evidence Based Medicine Institute at uh, McMaster University in Canada, um, and that can be used to critically appraise the, uh, um, the medical study itself. And so we have a research guide on the library website uh, on how to critically appraise research articles. And then finally, consider the coverage. Does the uh, new knowledge that's being presented replace or update existing information or are they highlighting any gaps that are in the evidence base? A handy mnemonic for thinking about how to search our library databases is PICO. The P stands for a population of interest. The I is an intervention that you want to apply. The C is comparison, if there is one. And the O's are the outcomes to be measured. Applying PICO in a public health scenario. A group of children come down with measles. The parents are concerned about the potential health risks of vaccinations and have decided not to have their children receive the MMR vaccination. You need to develop an intervention or education program to increase the likelihood the parents will vaccinate their kids. In this case, the population is going to be the parents of children with measles. The intervention will be the education program. Your comparison is the parent group not educated and the outcomes you're hoping to observe are an increase in the uptake and the MMR vaccine rate or a reduction in the incidence of measles among children. Applying PICO to another public health scenario, you're concerned about the number of adolescents smoking in your community. You want to find journal articles that discuss successes in smoking reduction or quitting, and you focus on adolescents. You're interested in the efficacy of brief instruction versus a session with a motivational interview, and if these interventions will change smoking behaviour. In this case, your population are adolescent smokers. The intervention is the motivational interview. Your comparison is the brief instruction. And the outcomes you're interested in are smoking cessation or a reduction in consumption. So doing a search, I recommend clicking the link to PubMed from the Hemelfarb Library website. That's under popular resources on the left. And it's very keyword friendly, but you can also click the advanced link 
and start typing. So the top screenshot, I started typing smoking cessation and then um, uh, you can click the and button and select how to add that to the query box. So I usually select add with and, uh, select type your next concept, motivational interview, do the same again and you can see uh, below that it's then put those terms together and you can click the search button. Uh, in order to address the population we're interested in, uh, which is adolescents, you can scroll down the PubMed results page and you'll see a box on the left that will say additional filters. Click that and there's a variety of filters, one of which is age. So click the age and then find adolescent and check the box and click show. Then on the results page in PubMed, scroll down to where it says age and just check the box that says adolescent. It will then filter the results by age. So at the bottom, we have a screenshot of the PubMed search for smoking cessation and motivational interview and applying the adolescent filter. Uh, you can see it's brought up 80 results. Those limits remain active until you clear them off. So any subsequent search of PubMed, it, you probably should click the clear all limits to remove that adolescent search filter. Um, click any of the links in PubMed to see our full text links. Uh, these only appear if you have opened PubMed using the PubMed link on the Hemophile Library website. If you type pubmed.gov or Google PubMed, you'll see the vanilla version the public sees. So always click the link to our databases from our website in order to see our full text options.